everybody. Sorry I've been going crazy on uploading videos today. Uh, I just think this is another important one that I ought to do. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the water looks a little bit cloudy in there. And I just did some uh, hydrogen peroxide algae treatment in this tank the other day. And I lost a fish. I'm not sure uh, whether that was the culprit or not. I assume it was. It was just too coincidental. I'm not going to go into that again. Um, some of the comments I got from some of the people I, you know, interacted with after that um, just got me to thinking I ought to probably do a video to clarify a few points. Um, I've already mentioned don't ever use more than 3 milliliters per gallon, but I think that's way on the high side. I never use more than 1.5 milliliters per gallon uh, for a whole tank treatment. Uh, another key thing to think about is when you do that, if you're going to treat your whole tank, you have to take your biological filtration out. Um, or at least your biomedia out of your filter. Um, the, the hydrogen peroxide will not only kills microorganisms, it kills algae, but it also kills all your nitrifying bacteria. So if you leave your biofilter in there, you just completely wipe your biofilter out. Um, once you've treated the tank, you should never let it sit longer than half an hour before you do a major, at least 40 to 50 percent uh, water fill uh, or water change immediately afterwards. And then lastly, I want to point out that you really need to keep a close eye on the tank after you've done anything like this. Uh, as in my case, uh, I did take care of my biologicals and my filter, but the biological filtration that happens in anybody's fish tank, whether you've got a bare glass bottom or not, some of that filtration and nitrifying um, biological filtration is happening in your tank. The, the nitrifying bacteria actually lives on every piece of surface area. Now if you look at a tank like this and you think about every little nook and cranny in that bark and every little piece of gravel, every leaf, uh, there's just tons and tons of surface area. So while my biofilter certainly does the bulk of the biofiltration, my tank itself handles quite a bit of um, the nitrification process. So when I do a whole tank treatment like that, even if I'm preserving my biological filters in my filter proper, the biological filtration that happens in my tank is greatly reduced. And then what happens from there is you get this sort of double whammy. Uh, all that bacteria that is dead is now dead organic matter that's in your tank and is going to start breaking down. Um, as this happens, it's breaking down into a tank that now has a reduced capacity to deal with nitrifying bacteria. So it's just sort of this double whammy if you do something like this with your tank you've really got to be on top of keeping an eye on it now i've gotten to the point where i see a little bit of cloudy water i do a water change i didn't even bother to check it i imagine i'm still below um detectable amounts of um, nitrites or ammonia but to me if the water's starting to cloud up i have some pretty sensitive fish in there so i just go ahead and do i'm probably going to do about a 70 80 percent water change like i normally do on this tank um, also, another note is by doing that, it will, re, it, it will prolong the time it takes for my biologicals to recover. Um, the, the stuff that I'm dumping out of the tank, if there is any excess ammonia or nitrites building up, those bacteria need that as a food source. So if I keep dumping it out of the tank and putting fresh water back in, I'm reducing the food for these bacterial colonies to grow. They need food to grow. And in order to grow larger than they are, they need excess amounts of food. Um, a stable amount of food is going to stabilize the size of their colony. So you need to allow it to build up to higher levels than it's capable of dealing with at the moment. Um, just like when you work out, you push your muscles to where they go a little further than you are comfortable with, and then that's when they get stronger and develop. So you always have to have a little more of these um, ammonia and nitrites in the tank then the tank is capable of dealing with and that will allow your tank to grow these colonies back in of course in my case i don't want those levels to be anywhere above zero um, unfortunately they're going to have to be to allow that process i just explained to happen but i want to keep that to a minimum now the downside of that is it increases my labor load i have to do these water changes much more frequently um, and again, that frequency is prolonging the process to some degree, but I would rather put the extra work into it and keep my fish safe. Uh, of course, I say that. If, you know, if I was really that worried about keeping my fish safe, I'd keep the stupid uh, hydrogen peroxide away from my tank altogether in the first place. 
But at any rate, I'm getting ready to go switch the water and start filling the tank back up. I just thought I would dump that information out there. I hope that was uh, something you can all use. Uh, I know it was a lot of information very quickly, but do what you can with that. Uh, feel free to comment. Please like, please subscribe. And as always, I uh, thank you for watching.